oftentimes people just speak generally about the power that truth has, right? And people will just say as a general concept, the truth sets people free and speak the truth or speak your truth, whatever they mean by that statement. Well, hello and welcome to Sunday Morning with Hope Valley. I'm Pastor Sam, I'm the lead pastor of Hope Valley House Churches, and today we are continuing uh, in our study through the Book of Acts. We're actually uh, remaining in Acts chapter 20, looking at Paul's final words to the elders of the church in Ephesus. Uh, but before we get started into today's uh, lesson, let me just remind you of the question we left with last week. Each week, we try and take a, a weekly application question uh, to challenge ourselves in order to actually do the things that we're learning about and not just hear them or believe or you know, believe them only, right? And so uh, last week's question, as a reminder, was how is comfort getting in the way of you blessing others and what are you going to do about it? Uh, this week. So if you're in a group setting, that would be a great time to just kind of pause this video and uh, discuss in your group maybe some testimonies, uh, you know, maybe some struggles. What, how have you been applying that? What have you been seeing uh, as a result of that? And how is God working through you? Uh, so share that, encourage one another, help one another through the process as we uh, try to apply uh, the things that we are learning uh, with, uh, with God's help and with the help of the community. Um, all right, well, let me give you some intro again into today's passage. We're still in Acts chapter uh, 20. We're going to be reading just verse 17 through 38 again uh, today. And as a reminder again, uh, Paul is on his third missionary journey through the northern Mediterranean. Uh, as part of it, he spent two to three years in Ephesus, growing uh, really a thriving uh, church community there before continuing on. And now he has circled back to a place near Ephesus and he's giving a final speech to the leaders of the Ephesian church because he knows that the Lord will never bring him uh, this way again. And so he wants to speak to them one last time, give them some final parting instruction. And so we are spending three lessons looking at three points that Paul teaches them in this passage. Uh, last week we had looked at the first point, which is that we must live a life that blesses others and advances uh, the gospel. And this week we're going to look at a second point, which is that we must say what people need to hear. So it's kind of the question I have for us as we read today's passage again. We're going to be in Acts chapter 20, verse 17 to 38. And the question I want you to think about as we read is, what does God want us to say? Okay, what does God want us to say? Uh, so let me pick up here in verse 17. It says, now from Miletus, again, he set, uh, he sent to Ephesus and summoned the elders of the church. And when they came to him, he said to them, you know, from the first day I set foot in Asia, how I was with you the whole time, serving the Lord with humility, with tears, and during the trials that came to me through the plot, uh, the plots of the Jews, you know that I did not hesitate to proclaim anything to you that was profitable and to teach you publicly and from house to house. And I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, I am on my way to Jerusalem, compelled by the Spirit, not knowing what I will encounter there, except that in every town the Holy Spirit warns me that chains and afflictions are waiting for me. But I consider my life of no value to myself. My purpose is to finish my course in the ministry I received from the Lord Jesus and to testify to the gospel of God's grace. And now I know that none of you among whom I went about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. And therefore, I declare to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you because I did not avoid declaring to you the whole plan of God. Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And men will rise up even from your own number and distort the truth to lure disciples into following them. Therefore, be on the alert, remembering that day and night for three years, I never stopped warning each one of you with tears. And now I commit you to 
God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that I worked with my own hands to support myself and those who are with me. In every way I've shown you that it is necessary to help the weak by laboring like this and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus because he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And after he had said this, he knelt down and he prayed with all of them. And there were many tears shed by everyone. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving most of all over his statement that they would never see his face again. And they accompanied him to the ship. All right. So uh, today, there's as we look at another layer of Paul's uh, message here to the Ephesian elders, uh, first point I want us to focus on is that we must say what needs to be heard, even if it isn't pleasant. And we see this in Paul's approach and his testimony back to them. Uh, Paul's message was an important one, but it was not a popular or a pleasant one, right? Back in verse 21, he says, you know, uh, he, he didn't hesitate to proclaim anything that was profitable, and he testified to everyone about the repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that repentance means a complete change of direction. Uh, therefore, Paul was constantly teaching people that they were wrong and needed to change. Uh, that is not a pleasant message to give. It's not a pleasant message to receive. And so we see that Paul was focused on what was profitable and not just what was popular, right? Um, he focused on what people needed to hear, even if that message was offensive. And really, honestly, the message of repentance is a very offensive message. I mean, again, Paul's going around and his whole message is, uh, you're wrong and you need to change, right? Uh, that is not an easy thing to say to anybody, and yet it's what he devoted his life to sharing because the gospel was true and repentance is needed and it's critical for, for, uh, for human beings to be restored and redeemed and walk in health and wholeness with the Lord, right? And so uh, Paul, again, he spoke what was profitable, not what was popular. Uh, he knew that people's lives depended on on them knowing the truth of God. And this is clearly what enabled him to push through any discomfort in saying what needed to be said, right? And so again, that first big point here we wanna look at is that we must say what needs to be heard, even if it isn't pleasant. And consider what Paul would write to the church in Rome. In Romans chapter one, verse 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek, right? Uh, and so we can see Paul's heart there in that passage. Uh, the first, a second major point I want us to look at today is the fact that we must remember the consequences of not speaking the truth, right? Uh, so we must say what needs to be heard, even if it's not pleasant, and we have to remember the consequences. What happens when we don't speak the truth? Uh, because we see in what he says to the Ephesian elders here that Paul understood that he was not only responsible for what he did say, but he was also responsible for what he did not say, right? Uh, verse 26, he said to them, I declare to you that I'm innocent of the blood of all of you because I did not avoid declaring to you the whole plan of God, even the offensive parts, even the unpleasant parts, even the parts that maybe Paul would have struggled to say because of how it might be received. Right? He thought more about the consequences of not saying what God had given him to say than about what would happen if he did. Right? Anything that would make us afraid or reluctant to speak the truth must be weighed against the consequences that people will suffer if we don't. And especially for those of us who are non-confrontational, who don't like to ruffle feathers, Oftentimes, we're too focused on the consequences of what will happen when we do speak, and we're not nearly focused enough on, but what are the consequences if we don't? If we have the truth and we don't say it, what will happen then? And it's almost always, I would say, always, the consequences to not speaking the truth are worse than any consequence that comes from speaking the truth, right? And so when we hold back from speaking the truth of God, we share 
responsibility for what happens next. That's why Paul is able to say to them, I'm innocent of all of your blood. In other words, whatever happens to you, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever happens to you between you and God is no longer on my shoulders because I did my part. I, I said everything that needed to be said, right? And we can also look at what James says in Jane, uh, James chapter 4, verse 17. He says, it's a sin to know the good and yet not to do it. Uh, and this correlates also to Hebrews 13, 17. Uh, if you take a note, you can go look at those passages, right? So the third major point I want to focus on today is that therefore we must trust the Lord to work through the truth, okay? Um, so we have to say what needs to be heard, even if it's not pleasant. We must remember the consequences that come from not speaking the truth, and we must trust the Lord to work through uh, the truth. This is really p- key, right? Because Paul pointed people back to what God had given him to say. Look at verse 32. He said, Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you inheritance among those who are sanctified, right? So Paul knew that if people will receive God's message and actually put it into practice, which is what he means by he's committing them to these things, right? Then they would grow and they would mature. And therefore, Paul knew that he had done his part uh, by speaking the truth, right? And so uh, Paul pointed people back to what God had given him to say, which also means he didn't repeat himself a whole lot, right? He said what needed to be said. He made it really clear. He was thorough. He was enduring with the message. But at some point, Paul said, look, now I'm committing you uh, to, to, to do that because I know that God will work through it if you listen and receive it and do it, right? Uh, and you can also reference what Paul wrote to the Philippian church in Philippians 4, uh, verse 9, when he said, Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and singing me, and the God of peace will be with you, right? And so Paul knew that convincing people and bringing change in their life was the job of the Holy Spirit, not his job. Right, Speaking the truth gives the Holy Spirit something to work with. We can kind of think of it like that. It's a simple way to think of it. It's not 100% the right theological way, accurate way to think about it. But in, in simple practical terms, when we speak the truth, we give the Holy Spirit something to work with in people's minds and, and hearts. And so, uh, like Paul, we have to have that same confidence that it's the Holy Spirit's job to convince people and bring change in their life. And it's our job to speak the truth and to say what God's giving us to say. And I hope these things really kind of challenge and exhort you because too often we don't say what God's giving us to say because of you know whatever reason, fear, uh, intimidation, uh, desire to be accepted, uh, 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 lack of you know, uh, you know you know confrontational spirit you know whatever you know whatever it is we, we don't like to have rough conversations we don't like to ruffle feathers, but we've got to remember that um, it's not our job to change people. It is our job to do what God's giving us to do, and that is to speak the truth that he's giving us uh, to say and trust him with what goes on from there. And so let me just leave you with a few passages where Paul talks exactly about this before we go into some uh, discussion and journaling questions uh, here in a moment. Uh, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Uh, Paul says, I planted and Apollos watered, but God gave the growth, right? Uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, he says, You were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed, right? And so what was, what was uh, Paul and the other apostles' jobs here? To speak the word so that they could hear the word, but when they heard it and when they believed, the Holy Spirit's the one who did the work of sealing them. Right? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, he says, When you received the word of God that you heard from us, you welcomed it not as a human message, but as it truly is the word of God, which also works effectively in you who believe. These are some powerful statements. And uh, I just want to make sure that I say this so that we don't understand. Oftentimes, people just speak generally about the power that truth has has, right? And people will just say as a general concept, the truth sets people free and speak the truth or speak your truth, whatever they mean by that statement. And I want to be clear here that what I'm talking about is speaking the truth of God. Not necessarily every truth and however you define that truth is going to be helpful or set anyone free or do anything good in anybody's life. Not necessarily. 
What we're talking about today is the truth of God. The message of, uh, the message of salvation. The message of repentance. The true principles clearly taught through the scriptures, right? That come to us from the Lord. How do I live my life? How do I make decisions? How do I follow Jesus? What does following Jesus look like? These kinds of things. These are the truths that will transform people's lives. When we speak them, they receive them, and the Holy Spirit works through them, right? So our job is to speak it and to not hold back. But I'll, I just want to be clear, it's not like all these good things come from you just speaking whatever you think is true or just any truth in general, right? These things apply to when you speak the truth of God because the truth of God is a sure thing that people can actually rely on. And the truth that we often label as truth might be very unreliable, unwise, and even against the true truth of God. So I just want to clarify that because sometimes there's some confusion there and people use the word truth way too generally and, and then these ideas get misapplied. All right, let me give you some uh, questions. If you're in a group uh, setting, it'd be great to discuss these questions. If you're not, maybe write them down, think about it, journal, share with other people this week, have some conversation about them. But I just wanna, want you to kind of engage your mind a little bit and just go a little bit deeper with the things that we are talking about in this lesson. So uh, first question I have here for you is, what challenged you most in today's lesson? Uh, did anything make you feel uncomfortable? Uh, that's a great uh, area to mine there for a moment and, and dig into uh, what we've been learning because uh, maybe the part that made you feel uncomfortable is where your learning needs to focus in this lesson. Uh, what are some lies we believe that hold us back from speaking the truth? That's a great question uh, for us to think about. And then how can we learn the difference between what we want to say and what God wants us to say? Uh, and that's a little bit what I was talking about just a moment ago, right? Uh, how can we learn the difference? Because sometimes we go, I'm speaking God's truth. And really, you're just speaking your truth because it's something that you want to say and you think people need to hear. And you've not slowed down to find out what does God want people to hear? And what does God want you to say? So let's talk about that. How can we learn the difference between what we want to say and what God wants us to say? That's a complex uh, uh, situation there. So let's, let's dig into that. Uh, again, just kind of the big idea I want you to walk away with from today's lesson. I know I've talked about a lot of things, but here's just kind of where I want to land the plane uh, uh, today. You know, learning the truth of God comes with the responsibility to speak it. It's not our job to convince anyone of God's truth, but it is our job to speak it, even to the point of being confrontational. When we embrace this responsibility with humility, then we can safeguard others from harm and open pathways to health and healing. So I really hope that you take this to heart because too often we remain silent when we know God has given us something that needs to be said and for whatever reason, we don't. And so let's follow Paul's example and Paul's exhortation to the Ephesian elders to not hold back from speaking the whole plan of God. Uh, and then a uh, question I have to challenge ourselves with this week and to actually apply and do the things that we're learning about in this lesson is how will you stretch yourself this week in speaking the truth of God? Uh, really think that through. Pray about that today, uh, right? How will you stretch yourself this week? Let's get specific in speaking the truth of God. And then I just encourage you when this lesson is over, just take some time to pray. Ask the Lord to teach us the truth and to give us the words to speak so that people hear what they need to hear and not what we just want them to hear. So when we talk about speaking the truth of God, we're going to need to receive that first from the Lord in order to say it, right? And so let's ask the Lord to teach us the truth and give us those words. I just encourage you to pray that way uh, once, once this lesson time uh, is over. So I hope this has been helpful and a blessing for you, helpful in your growth and your walk with the Lord. And I hope that you continue with us as we uh, study through uh, the book of Acts. Uh, in the meantime, be blessed and have a great day. Bye. We are so glad you've joined us today. To learn more about Hope Valley Church and get access to free resources, just go to www.hopevalley.church. There you will also find links to connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as links to our podcasts now available on Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. 
And if you're watching this on YouTube, please take a moment to like and subscribe so you can stay up with new videos coming out every week. Hope Valley is a church based in Winchester, Virginia that meets in homes around the region. So if you'd like to find out more about home churches, how they work, and how to locate one near you, just go to hopevalley.church/house. Thanks again for joining us and may God bless you today.